I am going to introduce Larry. Larry, thank you again for being on Unspotted. Oh, it's an honor. This is exactly where you need to come for credible life advice. You ask the questions, and we're going to answer them. is the author of this book, which is called Victory, Seven Revolutionary Strategies for Entrepreneurs to Launch Your Business, Elevate Your Impact, and Transform Your Life. But I'm also going to say a little bit more about Larry right now. Uh, not only are you the best-selling author of this, you're a mentor, you're a coach, mm -hmm. you run a uh, boutique hotel group, yeah. a major boutique hotel group, P.S., and you're a Green Beret. For many years, yeah. so you're in the special forces. Yep. Um, I just want to read a couple quotes that I love that you've said before. Okay. Uh, entrepreneurs are uniquely qualified to close the leadership gap because they're nimble and curious. You yes. didn't use the word nimble and curious, but that's what I derived from one of the that's chapters right. in the book. Mm -hmm. You also say, I believe this is in your introduction. I want to give a special thanks to all of those folks who told me I'd be risking the security of a well-respected job and healthy paycheck if I started my own companies and then quote unquote encouraged me to not venture on the entrepreneurial journey to turn back and stay in the calm waters. So I think that's really interesting because some of the biggest pushback I've gotten has been from family members and loved ones, yeah. which is really painful to say to them, right. I'm gonna go against your advice and do what I gotta do. And sometimes it, not gonna lie, hasn't, <laughs> been, hasn't been easy on those relationships. Well, putting that last one in context as you're reading through that introduction, it's basically like, F you, look. What yeah, I've done. <laughs> totally. <laughs> You're like, ah, yeah, yeah, exactly. Told yourself. Yeah, thanks for believing in me. Not. <laughs> Here's the turkey. Yeah. yeah. Right. Um, you also say one of my favorite quotes was, oh, and this one I actually, so I'm a big tacker upper of quotes on my vision board okay. at home. One of my favorite sayings is, only those who can see the invisible can do the impossible. That was the motto for the, the martial arts studio that my twin brother and I had before we went to the military. Unbelievable. So one of the reasons I love that, one of my favorite quotes from Chagall is, if I create with the head, nothing happens. If I create with the heart, everything happens. Yeah. So I wanted to just bring you on really quickly today to talk yeah. about some really practical tips we can give listeners yeah. about entrepreneurship uh, that you've learned over the years through running very successful businesses and coaching all the amazing people that yeah. you've helped yeah. grow their own businesses. Yeah. Well, and P.S., as you like to say, they're not all just yeah. successful businesses. <laughs> I say that. There have, been, there have been some businesses that have been utter and absolute failures. Right? Yes. And I've had some businesses that have started out well, failed, and then we've been tenacious and brought them from the brink of destruction, destruction into amazing prominence. So I've been on the, the journey. roller coaster. You know the journey. Yeah, yeah. So, so these tips are what? So these have kind of called down. I wrote an article called... Um, five star strategies to create an extraordinary life and business. And so these are kind of five quick tips that if we would just embrace these, get this into our head, I think it'll offer some clarity. So mm -hmm. I, wanna, I wanna also say really quickly here that sometimes we hear these things and we go, well, that's kind of an obvious mantra. But I always tell patients and people like that we need to hear these things over and over again because it's like they don't always sink in and you need right. to be reminded which is why coaching is so nice because people actually remind you every day on how all of my coaches and ment coaching coaching clients and mentoring clients and any speech I ever give I start out with this so if you ever see me um, live. Uh, do it live you'll I hear me I say do. this is I kind of joke hey there is this nasty virus going around the IAKT virus I already know that when you start saying I already know that you stop thinking you close down instead we need to embrace TFTR thanks for the reminder Yes. Think about if you had an argument with somebody who's a loved one in your life and they put their hand up and say, oh, I already know that. You already told me that. But instead they say, oh, honey, thanks for the reminder. Oh, change the whole time. How would that have gone differently? And we need to think about that just in our life. Many of us have seen movies over and over again, and each time we get something different out of it. Each time we read a different, the same book over and over, we get something out of it. We need to be reminded. Of, of these things. So just live TFTR. Thanks for the reminder. I go back to what, what was sort of weird that happened to me when I started working out again after having kids was that I was a swimmer my whole life. Yeah. 
And there was something so valuable about getting in a pool three or you know, four times a week sure. and having someone work on my strokes and encouraging me. Yeah. And we lose that if we don't have good mentorship in our lives. Yeah. Moving forward in academia, I didn't really have mentorship. And then I went into private practice. I'm working by myself. I had some colleagues. We, yeah. we do some groups work, but yeah. it's not the same. And all of a sudden, I was on my yoga mat one day thinking, God, I really wish I still had a coach every single day. Yeah. So that's what these sort of reminders are. There are well, ways that we the, can get that kind of coaching. Absolutely. And, so, and, there, and they're succinct. And so you may have thought of the whole, I don't know, you, you flirted with this, but this is a succinct. Well, the first one is this, and we've talked about this a lot now since you and I have known each other, and that is this, we have to remove the negative chatter that's in our head. Yes. Okay. So this is, the first, not, is this yeah, one of so, the first strategies. Yeah, so there's the five of them. First strategy, there's five of them. Remove the negative chatter. I'm not white enough. I'm not black enough. I'm not tall enough. I'm not enough, whatever, enough, 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 skinny enough, gotta, pretty you gotta, enough. You gotta, you, gotta, you gotta stop it. I'm not well enough connected, you know? Um, you gotta stop that chatter. I'm not so talented I, enough. Right. Yes. So we're, we'll get to that one. How um, do you do that though? You have to replace the negative chatter with mm -hmm. positive stuff. You gotta do a morning routine. Every successful person, high achiever I know has a morning routine. And for me, that part of my morning routine and mine usually takes about seven minutes is I put positive stuff in my brain. You know, imagine that glass of water over there. Imagine that we're actually swamp water. And I said, Nell, you need to get clean water in there, but you're not allowed to pick the glass up and empty it out. It's just filled with swamp water. Well, how do you do that? You keep pouring clean water into it. And ultimately that clean water dilutes out that nasty water until it ultimately becomes clean. So you have to put positive stuff in your head. Now, sometimes it means we need to get those negative people who put stuff in our brains out of our life. Ooh, That's bigger the task. hard part. That's, a bigger That's the hard task. part. But, but what, you can start by of... just positive reading mantras. And I wrote a book several years ago called Flashpoints for Achievers, which is a daily journal that starts your day off with positivity. Now, maybe there's religious readings, maybe there's spiritual readings, but read something positive into your brain um, each Be day. Because I always tell people, your brain is a slippery fish, and sometimes our default and different people have different defaults, obviously, but sometimes our, our default button is a negative thought pattern. Yeah, for sure. Well, so, so I don't wake up, people always describe me as exuberant and yeah. warm and sunny. I don't wake up that way. I definitely yeah. feel like I wake up in a negative mindset. I have to take that time in the morning. For me, it's all of a sudden coming up with a gratitude list. Yeah. Right well, there, if I come from a place of gratitude very early in the morning, my mindset starts to change by the time I'm making well, my coffee. Well, that's interesting. That's part of my morning routine is my gratitude list. But also um, now people ask me about the, my morning routine all the time. And now I say, well, I start my morning routine the night before. So why do I, what do I mean by that? You read I positive do, thoughts before. Exactly. I read, I try to re, try to do positive readings before I go to bed, but I definitely go through my list of gratitudes because sleep studies have shown that you wake up the way you go to sleep. So in the old days, I would go to bed and my to-do list was right next to my bed and oh. I'd wake up in the middle of the night and I was training myself that when I had an idea to wake up and write it down, you can't do that. And so what I do now is the last thing before my pretty little eyes go to sleep, I'm at least, if I'm not actually writing it out, I'm going through everything that I'm grateful for. So that's what my mind is categorizing during the night. So we have to stop the negative chatter. And so you just find a bunch of quotes, put them in your head in the morning. Yeah, mine and, and then this is like goes back to CBT therapy, right? Cognitive yeah. behavioral therapy, sure. like change your mind. Right. Well, I had a mentor years ago when I really mm -hmm. crashed and burned, which is a story for another day. It was scraping Which is like bottom. one of my favorite stories, by the yeah. way. I love well, hearing people's. Yeah. Well, my Phoenix one, story. Yeah. Well, my mentor um, gave me a CD of all things of Louise Hay, yes. her 101 Power Thoughts. Oh. And I listened to that. If I wasn't <laughs> in a meeting or I wasn't, and believe me, we could tell, do a whole hour on this, uh, on how I kind of pulled out of that. But that was playing in my car. It was playing in my house. I had it when I was working out. 101 Power Thoughts over and over and over. Because I was retraining my brain. Yes. Uh, how to think. Yes. I mean, I can hear her voice today. God, bless, God rest her soul. Yes. Okay. Second, second, second one, one, focus on your strengths. You have to identify what your inherent strengths are. And so there's two assessments. I encourage people to take the Colby A index and the Clifton strength finders, which you can Google. find both online Find them both online. They're both, they're very inexpensive. Um, identify what your strengths are and capitalize on those. And only do the things that you're strong, that are in your areas of strength, or that you're passionate about. Like there's things I'm passionate about that I'm not very strong in, but I want to live in my passion, right? And then I build teams around me where my weaknesses are, those are their strengths. So that imagine if you're building a team and every person on your team gets to come in every day and they only work in their strengths. 
it's productivity huge. soars, morale soars, right? And um, so that's focus on your strengths. So when I'm interviewing somebody for my team, now I ask them the question, what do you really, I know you're here because we put up an ad, let's say on Indeed, yeah, sure. and here's the job description of what our organization needs yeah. at this point, but what do you really wanna do? Because yeah. I know we're gonna do a lot better if you tell me what you wanna do. Yeah. Maybe you're gonna have to do a little bit of the stuff you don't wanna do, but if I can feed you the work that you really wanna do, yeah. that's where I'm gonna see a huge amount of progression forward. Sure, sure. And happy, right? Happy, happy team members. Absolutely. Well, happiness is one of the most underrated <laughs> <laughs> qualities in an organization. I talk about this in, my, in, in this book. In fact, I've got a little, little graph uh, in there, but happiness rocks. If you can create a happy work environment, people will want to be there. They'll change their mindset like, oh, I get to go to work today. I get to get up today. I get to be part of this organization today. Not that I have to. Right. Right. And that changes uh, a whole lot of things. Tell third, me the next one. Third strategy is to take rapid action. Too many people just sit around and they're entrepreneurs. Oh, one day. Hope is not a plan. No, one day I'm going to do this. When and my no spiritual plan bypassing. Is, um, no, exactly. When I, when I get my color printer, then I'll, I'll do it. When I lose oh, 20 pounds, I'll start posting on Instagram. No, start today. One of my favorite quotes is by General George Patton, one of the greatest American generals ever. And he said this, a good plan violently executed today is better than a perfect plan next week. I love that. A good plan, violently executed today, is better than a perfect it's plan. It's the word week. violently executed. Yeah. That is pretty... He doesn't talk about a stellar plan or a great plan. Just has to be Just good a enough. good plan. But you got to take rapid action and get the stuff done and just do it. And I think that's what separates the high achievers from those people who are just entrepreneurs who turn resentful with people because they know that they had the goods, but they just didn't take action. How many ideas have you had and you didn't take action on it and then somebody else, you see it come to market. Oh, I had that idea. If only take rapid action. I also think that it, just in part there is part of me being able to take rapid action is because I'm not a perfectionist. Yeah. I'm type A, but I'm not a perfectionist. Perfection's yeah. never interested me intellectually because yeah. I think it slows up the process and I'm into the idea of progression. So you get that progression. I Well, I do, and I don't suffer from it. I feel lucky and blessed that I don't. Because I know do. a lot of people do. Dudes, press send on the emails. <laughs> <laughs> Put it out there. I have a, I have an MFA. I have spelling mistakes and grammar mistakes all the time in yeah. my Instagram posts yeah. because I still post my Instagram. Sure. And I'm typing so quickly, generally in between things, yeah. that I generally have to go back and edit it hours later. Yeah. And I just forgive myself. Yeah, and I'm like, true. if people think I have bad grammar, whatever. Yeah. Whatever. So it's yeah. a very small example, but yeah. it's about taking the rapid action. It's better to have the post up than like sit and sweat it. Exactly. Better done than perfect is what I Better done than is. perfect. Okay. Yeah. So the next one is to expect and embrace failure. <laughs> I just expect nothing. <laughs> Everything else is frosting on the cake. Yeah. Well, expect and embrace it. And do what we call, we did in the military and I do it in our organization, an AAR. After every failure, uh, frankly, after every success too, but do an AAR, an after action review. What a I download, do right, a big exactly. download. What I do right, what I do wrong, and how can I do it better the next time? And then just move on. Focus on how. what did we learn from this? And stop beating yourself up for the failure. Everyone fails. Everyone. Everyone I have failed fails. so yeah. much. Yeah, no, one, no one gets out of bed one day and they're an Olympic athlete the next. There's been a lot of failures along the way. These are. Expect it, but learn from them. Too many people let their failures, though, paralyze them. Absolutely. Because they think they're going to define them. Failure doesn't... Or they take it, it really personally. Well, yeah, they take it personally, but they think that failure defines them. Look, everybody's looking at me. I, I actually fail. thought that failure, there was enormous freedom you. in failure, not only because I learned yes. so much, but just because once you decide, like the biggest failure I had was writing a book proposal, a few of them for three years of my yeah. life, and then not selling a book at the end after mm -hmm. meeting with major mm -hmm. publishers. Yeah. That was a huge professional, yeah. what felt like a professional failure for yeah. me. I yeah. have an MFA yeah. Yeah. <laughs> from Columbia. Yeah. Like. Are you kidding? Yeah. Like I still can't get this done. Am I not talented yeah. enough? Whatever the whole, you know, yeah. all of it's going on. And it really hurt for a few sure. months. Like sure. I'm not gonna lie. The part that hurt the most, and we've talked about this, is the value proposition, which is I had spent a lot of time away from my children to be yes. able to accomplish, yeah, no, that's, that's to right. get that far. And that yeah. was really painful that I didn't get to taste the uh, fruits of my labor, so to speak, yeah. right then, at that point. That's the key. At that point, I believe it will still happen and, yeah. uh, and or something else great will come from yeah. it. But it's the ability to then say, okay, this is like as big of a failure as I've had on a professional front. I failed much more in my personal life in other ways as well. Yeah, yeah. But 
there's a freedom because once you, you once you have that real bad failure, yeah. you're like, eh. <laughs> <laughs> I fail all the time. Exactly. People don't return my phone calls all the time. I love like, that though. What freedom, does it matter? There's like, freedom and failure. There's that just is, massive freedom yeah. and failure because mm -hmm. now I don't. Now I've become like kind of impervious to failure. I'm like, oh yeah, yeah. that's just like part yeah. of it. You're just gonna get rejected yeah. a, lot. <laughs> a lot a lot and you're gonna screw up a lot and it just means that the timing isn't right today yeah. which kind of leads us or to you did effect. a crappy job yeah. or you were pompous in a meeting right. or you know but it, unless you actually stare at your navel a little bit what i do right what i do wrong and how can i improve the next time you're not going to know yeah and you're just going to move from failure to failure to failure and never improve Right. Well, I like to always think about my failures as well as my back was pushed up against the wall. It didn't go my way. But man, I have to tell you that those are come to Jesus moments for me mm -hmm. where I was like, ooh, they might have said something true. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> and I got to go back and reflect. And then I like come back at it stronger and I come back at it with a with a clearer vision yeah. and a bigger determination to I have to say it kind of proved people wrong yeah in a way there's nothing wrong with that yeah. there's nothing wrong with that but here's the thing that you just described it takes guts to do that it takes courage to do that to actually reflect and say oh was there really truth in what they just said oh right? yeah i'm always courage open to changes criticism. everything yeah i'm always have the guts I, to face it. i always when when i ended up having those come to jesus talks with the people who in this case were trying to sell the book i really i've sat on the floor in my office I sat with the phone for 45 minutes and said, tell me what I could have done better. Yeah. Just okay. just like rip off the band-aid. What needs to change here? What needs That's to shift? Good. I'm opening my heart to it. And I do that on my personal life as well. Mm -hmm. And I also coach patients for years to do that. Yeah. Instead of being defensive right away and saying F you, yeah. Hmm. Is there some truth to what you're yes, saying? Right. Let me sit with that for a little yeah. while. My favorite, one of my favorite phrases when you're thinking about failure or getting criticism is let's marinate on that one. Yeah, right. Like I'm going to take what you just said. Yeah. I'm not going to respond for a while and I'm going to take it in. I'm going to marinate on it to see if there's some truth in what you're saying. Yeah. We do have a, with my coaching clients. We have a similar thing. We just say be in receive mode. Don't respond. Just be in receive mode. Just let it sink in. And then if you disagree with it later on, fine. I like that marinate. Marinate. No, <laughs> okay, good. go ahead. So the last of yes. the five strategies uh, that I think will help you create an extraordinary life and business is um, just never give up. Now, I'm going to put a caveat on this: never give up, because we've heard the quotes, right? Never, never, never quit. I know. I don't. I don't agree with that because I think there's a difference between not giving up, never quitting, and saying enough is enough. Okay, sometimes you need to know when to say enough is enough. I need to right? pull the plug on this. This yeah. isn't, no matter what I do here. Exactly. But that's not quitting. because you Quitting to me is like you've not let it run its course. You've not put everything into it. If you put everything into it, you've done everything you can and it still is not working, then yes, yeah, say enough is enough. Okay, right. it's time to shift course. And sometimes it's just a five or 10 degree shift and all of a sudden there's a clear path in front of you, right? Um, but uh, tenacity eats talent for lunch. If you are just tenacious and you're giving every, so the Greeks had this word called arete, which is pursuing excellence in everything that you do. Mm. If you can honestly say- Damn, those Greeks had it down. I know. <laughs> A long time ago. <laughs> yeah, if only we would listen. <laughs> it's, it's the conative brain that they used to study, right? Mm -hmm. So anyway, um, so, which is pursuing excellence in everything you, you do. If you can honestly say, hey, I am driving after this and I'm pursuing excellence in this, if you can honestly say that and it's still not getting anywhere, then it's time to say enough. Right. You don't want to drive enough. yourself into financial ruin right. in your family if you're Or not. divorce or whatever, if that's not what you yes. want, right? Yes. Um, so I'm not suggesting that people drive their life and business off a cliff. Oh, Larry said never give up. Know what I'm saying? I'm saying is be aware, pursue excellence, help your team move closer to their fullest potential and you're gonna see greatness happen. So I'm gonna add a little something to that. That's right. why it's so important to surround yourself with people who are encouraging and that yeah. you trust their opinion yeah. to maybe pull you off the side of the cliff. Well, this is why you need mentors. This is why you need some sort of checks and, and balances mm -hmm. in your life because you need people to say, you know what? This isn't, th like we can see this in a way that you can't, because you've yeah. said this to me, yeah. when you're in it, sometimes it's really hard to see, right. especially when you're doing a personal brand as well. You yeah. can't see how other people perceive you. Right. And so I love this idea of then surrounding yourself by a few people who say, yeah. like, let's back this car but up. Be, exactly. <laughs> this but is you, about to go to a very ugly right. place now. But, but if you have people, if, you, if those people that you've chosen to do that, 
don't understand the journey that you're uh, on, and they're always going to say, and right? They're always going to be the out. ones. Don't go into the deep of waters. Course. You don't. You want people who, who are down the path further than you are. Um, so I've got kids. My daughter is 17. My son is 14. But I remember them being in first grade and thinking that the fourth graders were gods. Like, oh, those fourth graders got it all figured out because the fourth graders were coming in and reading yeah. to the first grade, whatever it was, right? And so I realized that fourth graders look like gods to first graders. So what we need in our life is just somebody who's in fourth grade. We may be in first grade, somebody who's down the path a little bit further because fourth graders look like idiots to seniors yes. that are in 12th grade, right? They don't need to have it all figured out, but they need to be further down the path than you are. So you can say, yeah, this is normal. This, of course, this is going to happen, right? So Gretchen Rubin just did a podcast on this, and she called it the pace setter. Oh, yeah. Who are you, who's your pace setter? Yeah. Do you have a few people in mind that you look to, and you might not know them personally, yeah. where you're like, wow, they did X, Y, and Z, yeah. and so I know that this is the journey I need exactly. to go on. It's good mentorship. It's sort of a good... Yeah. Uh, you know, just vision to help yeah. you clarify your vision of like, oh, okay, I get it how they did that and I'm yeah. going to try. Well, I'm a big believer in the people in your life ought to be broken up in thir into thirds. A third of the people in your life ought to be the ones that are further down the path than you, who are the pace setters, who are the ones who are inspiring you. A third of the people ought to be people peers, peers who of are yours, there. who yeah. are with you, who are in you're it. arm to arm, locked arms, locked elbows, and you're going through this together. And then a third ought to be mentoring, mentoring people who are behind you. If you're in fourth grade, you're now mentoring the, the first, first graders, graders. Uh, because there's a big give back. Something happens in the world, in the universe, when we serve other people, yes. right? Yeah, and, um, and so if you break it up in thirds, I think that's a really healthy way to, to live your life. So those are my five... Uh, success strategies awesome. so to create an extraordinary life and business. Awesome. Thank you so much yeah, for being you. on Scripted today. Oh, awesome. Thank you. Go get them. Thanks so much for listening to today's episode of Unscripted with Nell Daly. If you could right now, we need you to head on over and review us on iTunes. As always, we will personally reach out and thank each and every one of you who do so, but we'd love your reviews. So tell us what you think. And you can always send us emails with either guests you want on the show or comments or questions. We're happy to get those. And you can find those on the website, our contact information at nelldaily.com. To see all of my comings and goings, get updates on who our next guests are going to be. And if you just need a little bit of extra life advice or inspiration, come join me over on Instagram at Nell Daily. I use Instagram every single day. Or like us over on Facebook and you'll automatically be following us. And that's at Nell Given Daily. That's also where you can watch us live. Before I end, I want to thank our audio editor, Walter Eggers, our video editor and co-producer, Paige McGovern, and our video production manager, Rick and Diver, co-producer, Corey Pakowski, and the rest of the Point Zero Media team. I couldn't do any of this without you. I couldn't. Of course, Teachable HQ, you guys rock. They're an amazing educational technology company. Check them out. I use them. Everybody big in the business uses them. They're just awesome. And a huge shout out of gratitude. Huge. The biggest to all the fans who are following the show. Just like I said last week, I am so humbled by how this is all going. Thank you. Until Monday, everybody, peace out. Have a fun and safe weekend. I love you guys already. Come on.